Would you give a great big Graceway welcome to Bakari Bamba? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Before you do anything, I want to be able to pray for you. This man is a man of God. Whew. Man, he loves Jesus. When you hear his story, you're going to understand why. He has gone through so much to propagate the gospel across Africa, not just West Africa, all of Africa. I love it when I go to talk to him or send him a message and he says, I'm in the northern part of Africa on a mission trip. I guess that's the same thing as us going from here to California. Kind of like going to a foreign world, isn't it? Amen? This guy does missions. He starts new churches. He raises up new pastors. By the way, you as a church help pay to send him to seminary. Amen? He got to go to seminary because of Graceway Church. We have supported. Amen? Praise God. We have supported his family. We continue to support his family. Uh, he's going to tell you all about all that. But um, would you just extend your hand this way? And let's pray for a double portion of God's spirit upon him this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brother, Bamba. Lord, I ask you today for a double portion of your spirit to rest upon him. God, as he opens his mouth and as he speaks to us, I pray that you would anoint him as you have never anointed him before. I pray that every word that flows from him would be straight from the mouth of God. Father, thank you for what you have done in his life and in his family. How you have blessed him and how you're going to use him today to bless us and encourage us. Would you use your servant now and may you be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bamba, yeah. give them Jesus, my brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bonjour. Bonjour. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me here today, this morning. It's a privilege and a blessing to me to stand before you today and to speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for this great moment. And I want to say thank you to my brother, Pastor D, because I remember 12 years ago, exactly, precisely on October 26th, when we met for the very first time, he said, hey, we need to bring Bamba into the U.S. so that he will visit our churches and our communities. Amen. Twelve years ago, yes. I remember Ooh. exactly. Hallelujah. And God <laughs> answered your prayers. Amen. And I'm here. And I want to bless the Lord yes. for this great opportunity I have today to stand before you. Yes. And say thank you to Graceway community for what you are doing for me during this week. Yes. You made this possible. May God bless you. Thank you so much. I had to be here. I had to be here Amen. to share with you what God is doing in my country. Yes. How his work is going on in my country. Thank you. Because of your support and your prayers for the ministry in my country. But before I share with you what is going on there. Let me introduce myself to you. <laughs> My name is ba Bakari Bamba. I'm 49 years old. He's the young man. <laughs> <laughs> 49. And uh, I'm married, father of uh, three children. I've been married officially with my wife, Colette. I miss her. <laughs> We've been officially married for 13 years, and uh, I have my daughter, Charlene, who is uh, 45 years old now, and uh, we have Justin, my first son, 
the basketball player. <laughs> and uh, you have uh, the, my youngest son, Michael, who will be 12 years tomorrow. Amen. Tomorrow will be his birthday. So here is my family. And I came to Jesus Christ 14 years ago. 14 years ago. I was born again. But before I came to Christ, I was Muslim. I was born and raised in a big Muslim family, and I was very involved as a Muslim, making animal sacrifices, believing that uh, those things will bring me close to God. And I remember, I remember times where, when people were coming to me, trying to share with me Jesus Christ, and I remember how I rejected them. Because for me, Jesus, and as what we learn as Muslim, Jesus was just a prophet like others. He couldn't be the Savior, the Lord, Christian people were talking about. So I was engaged as a Muslim. And one day, at the mosque, I heard the religious leader saying that one day, Jesus will come back and he will judge the world. He will judge those who will not believe in the word of God. That troubled me. I was hearing from a Muslim leader at the mosque that the Jesus I was rejecting would come back and he would judge me. I didn't want to be judged. So I went back to my community in order to ask them what to do in order not to be judged. Well, the answer they were giving me couldn't satisfy me. They were saying, if you do good things, if you are, you are respectful, if uh, you give to poor, maybe, or inshallah, that means God willing, you will be forgiven and you will go to heaven. <laughs> that couldn't satisfy me. So, I was increasing, increasingly troubled, and the despair were taking over me. When one day of the year 2010, one of my friends came to me, and he said that there was a team of Christian volunteers in Abidjan, the city where I live, and they were looking for a driver for a mission trip to the north of my country. I was available. So I went to meet them, and before we left, I met the missionary, Mike McAfee, who was stationed into Abidjan with his family, and we kept contact, and I went with the team. It was during this trip that I heard with more attention about Jesus Christ, his birth, his sinless life, his sacrifice on the cross, yes. his death, and his resurrection because of our sin. Yes. And uh, how we could be part of the kingdom of God because of what he did. So when we, come, we came back to Abidjan, one of the members of the team gave me my one Bible. And after a while, I opened this Bible and I started reading the scripture into the book of John. Yes. What I was reading there was st strong for me. It was so strong that I called Mike and I told him, I need you to come because I want to understand. I was reading that the flesh became 
the world became flesh. Yes. I wanted to know more about that. And for six months, six months, with patience and love, Mike was able to answer all the questions I had in my heart. And I asked him, do you believe that if I came to Christ, he would accept me? And he said, yes. <laughs> he said into the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10, if you confess in your mouth that Jesus is, is your Lord, and if you believe in your heart yes. that he rose from the dead, you will be saved Amen. for six months. I couldn't resist anymore. <laughs> and one day early in the morning, I called him and I said, I want to be baptized. And he asked me, why? And I said, I believe now that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. And he is the Lord and Savior. That was on June 1st. And on June 6th, this is what happened. Okay. Je vais demander la même question que Philippe a demandé de l'Ethiopien. Bamba, est-ce que tu crois avec tout ton cœur que Jésus est le Seigneur? Bon, avec ta parole, je te baptise au nom de Père, de Fils, du Saint-Esprit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So after many years of trouble and despair, I confessed Jesus Christ publicly before my friends and the three members of my family. And after that, peace I was looking for entered my life. Yes, amen. Two years later, I met for the very first time my brother, Pastor D. And that was the beginning of our brotherhood amen. and of a partnership into the ministry in Abidjan where I live. Yes. I could see how God loved me and how he wanted me to be a new person. Yes. So now let me talk about the ministry. But before, before the ministry, <laughs> after serving the Lord as a volunteer, God called me to fully serve him after his a lot of hesitations, I finally entered the seminary, and after three years, I got my degree yes. as a pastor. And I was introduced to the church as the associate pastor, the pastor of mission of our church. Yes. So God used me. Yes. God used me to do his work. Because when I came to Jesus Christ, I started working in one of the hardest area of Abidjan where live Muslim people and animist people. And we saw people coming to Christ, being baptized, and we were so encouraged that we found a place where we could gather them. But in the year 2019, the place we found was torn down. The place were demolished. People were sad. Members of the church were sad. They were upset. I also, I was sad. But I was not discouraged. Because what was happening was nothing before what God did, Jesus did on the cross for me. The joy I had was greater than the demolition of the building. Yes, 
So we continue working. We never stopped. And the year 2022, my brother, Pastor D, and his wife came to Abidjan, went to Abidjan, in order not only to encourage me, but also to continue the work of God, sharing the gospel among people. We were encouraged because of his visit. And listen, today, 80 people are identified as a member of this church. And 32 of them got baptized during the last seven years. And a few more will be baptized this year. God truly blessed his ministry, his work. Amen. Amen? Amen. Last year, my pastor came back. Oh, I can say, he went back. <laughs> <laughs> he went back with his wife, Mama Cheryl, and my sister Tracy. And there, after visiting churches that you support, we went to share the gospel among people. And it was amazing. It was amazing because a year before, God put in our hearts to reach two villages. Two villages. One mostly populated by Catholic people and another one by Muslim and animist people. And I shared that vision with my brother. And he came when he went on the mission trip in the year 2023. We went to those villages. The first village, the Catholic village, we, we met the chief and his staff. And they were very open. And for two days, two days of evangelism and prayer, 106 people heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And 62 of them prayed to accept Jesus Christ. The following day, we went to the second village, mass populated by Muslim people, where there is no clean water. And when we arrived there, we met the vice chief, his wife, and two other people. The team shared the gospel with them. The four people prayed to accept Jesus Christ. Yes. After that, we met the chief. Yes. And those people not only received the living water who was Jesus Christ, but they were also blessed with the water filter. Yes. We were encouraged. One more. We were so encouraged that this year, a month ago, we sent the youth of our church in that Muslim village. They stayed there for a week, going from door to door, sharing the gospel and showing the Jesus film. And listen. After a week, 783 people heard of the good news of Jesus Christ. And 32 of them came to Christ. 32. Brothers, I wanted to share this with you. If we did all this in Abidjan, it's because you never stopped praying for, for us. It's because you never stop supporting us. So I'm here today. I had to come and share those news with you. Let me talk a little bit about Abidjan. Into Abidjan, there are six million people in Abidjan and around. And as you can see, 42.5 percent are Muslim, 17 Catholic. 17 animist, 17.5 have no religion, and 
just 6% are Christian. And in Abidjan, many people are practicing false belief and so are about to be lost. In Abidjan also, there are many people who firmly believe that God will never forgive them because of the bad things they did in their life. So they believe that they will be condemned by God. But I believe something. Every time my brother comes with a team, he brings the message of hope to people in Jesus Christ. And we see many people coming to Jesus Christ. People passing from darkness and despair to the divine light and hope in Jesus Christ. You know, I also want you all to be part of this divine ministry that my brother Pastor D and the team has started in Abidjan. I'm here today to encourage you, to invite you to go to Abidjan. Because I believe that someone there is just waiting to hear from you in order to be saved. I believe that. God chose you, Graceway Church, to change the life of many people in Abidjan. And make sure, I want you to make sure that when you come, I will be there waiting for you, walking with you. And you will see how God will use you to change the life of many people. Let me tell you this. I know, I know that uh, sometimes, or right now, many of you, maybe, I say maybe, are thinking that they don't know how to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people. Maybe you are thinking that you don't know where to start and where to stop. I will understand. Moses also said the same thing before God. But there's something I believe in. God will put his words in your heart and in your your mouth so that you will be able to share with people. I believe that. And if you are still thinking that uh, it, it will be hard, it's okay. But there is something that you know better than anyone else. Your testimony. Yes, amen. The testimony of your life as a Christian. You know better than anyone who you were before you met Jesus Christ. You know what happened in your life when you met Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. and what he changed in your life. And you know now who you are since you have started walking with Jesus Christ. You know, brother, when we read the Bible from the book of Acts, we see the Apostle Paul always joyful to share his testimony with people he could meet. Your testimony, the testimony is also part of the good news of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you will be my witnesses. So when we take Acts chapter 26 from verse 4 to verse 18, we see Paul who stood before King Agrippa and he shared with him his life's testimony. From verse 4 to verse 12, he was joyful to speak at length about who he was and how he persecuted Christian people. And when we go to verse 
13 to verse 15, he was joyful to share what happened when he met Jesus Christ and the transformation Jesus performed in his life. And here is the passage, passage I love from verse 16 to verse 18. Paul said, Jesus loved him and the new person he became and how Jesus used him to change the life of other, other peoples. Let us read this passage. Jesus said to him, Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles, the Gentiles. I'm sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light yes. and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the main point. I want to share with you. I know that you are joyful since you met Jesus Christ. And I know you are joyful being in his holy house, praising him and worshiping him. I'm calling you today to go to my country and share this joy with people in sadness. Somewhere in Abidjan or in a village, someone is in despair. Your testimony, sure, will change the life of someone there. Today, if God is speaking to you, God speaks to his people. If God is speaking to your heart this morning, I want you, I, I encourage you not to resist. If God is calling you to go, I want to encourage you to answer his call. If you're hearing God speaking to your heart today, I want to invite you to come here and I will pray for you. Don't be afraid. God will put his words in your heart to share with people. If God is speaking to you, please stand up and I will be praying for you. Tell God, God, I'm here. Use me. I'm your servant and send me. If God is speaking to you, stand up. And I will pray for you. Amen. Amen. Let's me pray. Père, je bénis ton nom. Et je te rends toute la grâce. Et je te dis merci pour ce moment. Je te rends toute la grâce, éternel Père, pour ce moment que tu donnes. Je te prie, Père éternel de visiter ton peuple ce matin, de visiter leur cœur et de les utiliser puissamment comme tes serviteurs afin qu'ils aient gagné des âmes, afin que des personnes passent des ténèbres à la lumière soit pour eux une force. Mets ta parole dans leur cœur et que ton nom soit glorifié. Je bénis ton nom. Au nom de Jésus, nous avons prié. Amen. Amen. Would you stand all over the house?
What a word that God has used you, your faith, your prayers, your finances, and our people to go and make a difference. And obviously he didn't have lots of time to share with you everything that's going on in Abidjan. That was just a little bit of the iceberg. If you could see what God was doing because of this congregation, you would be amazed. Amazed. For him to come all the way from Abidjan to here is a miracle in and of itself. It's really hard for them to get visas to get out of the country. But we found that if you make a whole lot of noise and kick and scream a little, they'll, they'll send you. They'll get rid of you. I'm just kidding. I'm glad that God brought Bamba to us today. This man is real. When he shares the gospel, God uses him to prick the hearts of people. Today I want us to pray for him and I want to pray for you. We take trips every September to Abidjan. This will be the last year of being limited to three people on this trip. Because we have had transportation problems in the past and all we could get was a small car. Well, we have connections now where we can get a bus or a 15-passenger van. And we can take more people. For the first time in Africa this year, we're going into the village. Where are we going to do the, uh, the crusade at? Anyama Ajame. That's where we're going to do the crusade at. Yes. <laughs> For the first time, we're going in and we're setting up a crusade. We're going to do a three-night crusade. All the other days, we're going door to door, share the gospel, and inviting people to come to the crusade. Thousands of people will come out, hear the gospel, give their heart and life to Jesus, and we're also focusing on healing. We're praying for people to be healed. Now listen, we're, we're a little skeptical in the United States because religion has taught us to be that way. But when we go to Africa, we pray for somebody's healing, we believe, and we watch it right in front of our face. I mean, we watch healings over there happen every day just like that. It's nothing. So when somebody says, I've been healed in Africa, eh, it's just business is normal. In America, somebody says, they got healed, and everybody's like, oh my goodness, somebody got healed. You know why? We don't have the faith of those people. We don't believe like those people. Now, Bomba Graceway is a little bit different. We see healings happen all the time here at Graceway. In fact, we've had calls this week. And it started out like this. Pastor D, I can't wait to tell you what God did in my life. Remember the night when you were praying for people to be healed on a Wednesday night? That's how it started. And then I can't tell you how it ended because I want them to tell you how it ended. And those people are going to have opportunity to be able to share with you. We have healings that go on all the time. We have people getting saved all the time. We baptize here regularly. God is moving in this place. We can take this to Abishai. Pray about going with us next year. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could take six, eight, ten? Ten people. Man, I like your faith. I started at six. You just up the ante. Ten. And go preach the gospel and win people to Jesus because of your faith. Maybe you're here this morning and maybe God's doing something else in your heart. Maybe you need to be saved. Maybe you need to be baptized. Maybe God's doing something else in you this morning and you need to come pray. We're going to sing and I want you to come. Father, have your will in your way right now, God, in every heart, every life in this building. And those who are on the I campus, God, would you speak to us, move mightily in us right now. And as we sing praises to you, 
May you move us from where we're standing to this altar to cry out to you and to take care of business with the King. In Jesus' name, amen. As we sing together, come on, church. Come on, these altars are open.